Hi everyone, my name is Megan Hine. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. I make videos on natural and non-toxic beauty, and today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how I press my mineral eyeshadows, blushes, and powders. So if you want to learn how to turn this into this, keep on watching. So for our materials, you're going to need a loose mineral eyeshadow or blush. Um, today I'm using Silk Naturals Moonstone, which is a shimmer, and Silk Naturals Parallel, which is a matte shadow. Uh, these are five grams each. You are also gonna need a small mixing bowl, a mixing tool, pressing medium. This is the Silk Naturals Great Impressions Pressing Medium. That is a mouthful. And this costs $5.99 a bottle. I forgot to mention the shadows are $4.50 each. You're also going to need some pans to press your shadows into. I purchased my pans from TKB Trading. These are the 26 millimeter pans and you can get a hundred of them for $8.50. If you are pressing a blush or something in a larger size than my shadows, I would suggest going up to the 36 millimeter tins and on TKB trading you can get 25 for four dollars. You're also going to need a tamping tool and a pressing tile. I bought a press pack from TKB trading which comes with the tamping tool which is this top part and comes with two pressing tiles which just stick right onto your tamping tool. The press pack also comes with nine pans. You're also gonna need some rubbing alcohol. I keep mine um, just in this little spray bottle. It's a little easier to work with. And I like to keep a Sharpie handy to write the name of the shadow on the bottom of the pan. I like to store all of my pressed shadows, blushes, and powders in Z palettes. And right here I've got my eyeshadow Z palette. This is an extra large Z palette. And what it is, is a palette with a magnetic bottom. So this section is completely magnetic and the tin pans stick right on. So you don't need to add any extra magnets or metal to the bottom of your pans. So step one is gonna to be to disinfect all of our tools using our rubbing alcohol. I'm just gonna spray down my mixing bowl. I'm going to spray right into the pans and kind of swish that around. I'm gonna spray my mixing tool and my tamping tool. So, th so this just ensures that we're not gonna introduce any bacteria into our pressed shadows. So I'm gonna let that sit for a sec and then I'm just gonna dry everything out with a clean paper towel. I do suggest you press your powders in a well ventilated area, um, especially if you're sensitive to the smell of rubbing alcohol. And again, you should be working with clean hands or wear gloves. Okay, now we have all of our tools and pans completely disinfected. Okay, so first off, I am gonna show you how to press a matte shadow. This is Parallel by Silk Naturals. You're gonna start off by removing the cap and pour your product right into your mixing bowl. The Silk Naturals shadows come with a sifter top that you're gonna to need to remove. So I'm gonna take my little tool and slowly pop that top off. I don't want to rush at this because if this thing flies off, I'm going to powder everywhere. So slowly remove it and then dump the rest of your shadow into your bowl. Okay, just going to put the empty jar aside. I've got all my powder shadow right in here. Okay, the next thing I like to do is take my disinfected empty tin pan. I'm just going to write the name of the shadow on the bottom. Put that aside for now. 
Okay, so for matte shadows, you want to start off with as few pumps as possible. I'm going to start off with three pumps of my pressing medium. Matte shadows tend to get very hard and difficult to work with, so you want to use as few pumps as possible. I'm going to start off with three full pumps. So you can see them right in there. And now I'm just going to start mixing. If you are new to this, it is very easy to make the mistake of adding more pumps too quickly. It takes a while for the shadows to incorporate. You can see the textures starting to change a little bit from just a powder to more of like a crumbly sand texture. Okay, so the texture I'm after is like crumbly wet sand. I want to be able to push the shadow together and have it stick on its own, but I don't want it overly saturated. So I'm just going to mix for a few more seconds until it looks like the shadow is not going to incorporate any further. Okay, it's getting a little clumpy, which is good. It's starting to stick to itself. Alright, at this point I'm going to add one more pump of pressing medium and hopefully that'll do the trick. Okay, you can start to see larger crumbles forming. Keep mixing, we're getting close. The texture is darkening because the shadow is getting more and more saturated. All right, so now we're looking good. I don't think I'm going to need to add any more pumps because as you can see, we've got a really nice crumbly texture here. Just going to keep mixing until it kind of forms a paste. So I'll, let me show you what I meant by sticking together. You've got a little of the product on your mixing tool. I can smush into the rest of it and it sticks to my little spatula. So for completely matte shadows, this is the texture you're looking for. It sticks to itself, but it's also quite crumbly. So now I'm going to put my shadow right into my pan and I'm just going to dump it and slowly put it into the pan trying not to waste too much product. Okay. All right. So now we've got our pan with our product. And using the end of my tool, I'm just kind of smushing it into the pan. Not really pressing it down, but I'm just trying to smooth out the surface. The smoother you make the product at this point, the smoother and more professional looking your pan is going to be. If you don't really care what it looks like at the end, you don't need to take the time to smooth this out. So I'm just going around smoothing it. I want a really nice even layer. And I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so here's what our pan looks like. Got my product smoothed out. All right, now you are going to take a clean paper towel and I like to rip it into sections. Okay, take your first section, put it right on top of your pan, push down so you can find the edge of that pan. Now taking your tamping tool, you are going to put it right inside of the pan and you're gonna press down with your palm, trying to evenly distribute the weight Okay, and we're going to lift up. As you can see, a little bit of color and a lot of liquid deposited onto the paper towel. If you get any product kind of smudging out onto the edges, just take your tool and push it back in. We're going to continue this process until our paper towel comes up completely dry and clean. 
you want to remove as much liquid as possible at this point. Really pressing down hard. The harder you press, the less prone to breakage your shadows are going to be. Okay, and with every press, you're getting less liquid and less color deposited on your paper towel. Let's go in about two more times, and that should do it. I know you can use um, like a coin to press, but I really love this tamping tool because it allows you to really get your palm down on the shadow. Okay, and one more time. Okay. So now our paper towel is coming up fairly dry and clean. So this is what your wet pressed shadow looks like. Let it dry for a full 24 hours before trying to use it. As you can see, the color on this one is much darker on our dry one. This is the true color of the shadow. There's still some water and ethanol that's going to evaporate in this one. The last thing I like to do is um, using my Sharpie, I like to write down how many pumps of pressing medium I used right on the back. So I've got parallel. Right under that, I am going to write four. Again, if you want to repurchase and press this shadow, now going forward, I know that Parallel takes exactly four pumps. I just wanted to show you the texture of a shimmer shadow with six pumps of pressing medium. Remember, use fewer pumps with mattes and more with shimmers. So as you can see, the texture is a little wetter and the product sticks to itself a little more. I don't like them overly saturated. Um, so this is the texture I prefer for my shimmer shadows. So I'm going to take my product and scrape it into my clean pan. And we're just going to repeat the pressing process. So here is Moonstone, perfectly pressed. I have a really smooth surface. It's very professional looking. And this is the dry version of Moonstone. This is the true color. This one will lighten up within 24 hours and will be good to use. So let me just give you a little quick swatch so you can see the payoff. So that's really good color payoff. Okay, so you can repeat this process with your blushes, your translucent powders, your mineral foundation. You will need to adjust the number of pumps based on how much product you're using. Like I said before, a Silk Naturals eyeshadow fits perfectly in a 26 millimeter pan. Their blushes fit in a 36 millimeter pan. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you've got any questions, um, please leave them in the comment section below. Like I said, I've pressed about 35 Silk Natural shadows. So if you want to know specifically how many pumps I used on different colors, um, just let me know and I can hopefully help you out. 
All right, until next time, guys. Bye.